parens small a. Today is the date and time set for sentencing in this matter. Mr. Brown, do you know of any legal reason why we should not proceed to sentencing here today? Uh, no, Your Honor. Do either one of the freezes know any reason why we should not proceed to sentencing here today? No, Your Honor. Mr. Behina Rivera, let me ask you, do you know of any reason why we should not proceed with your sentencing here today? No. We'll uh, begin then with the state regarding the matter of sentence and punishment. Uh, Mr. Brown, do you have anything you'd like to say and or a victim impact statement? Judge, it's uh, my understanding that victim impact statements should come after allocution of the defendant. Is that okay. correct? Sure. All right. Uh, as far as a recommendation uh, on behalf of the state, um, I, I know the court is aware that this has been a very long haul in this case. Um, it's been a little bit over three years since Molly was found in August of 2018 and a little bit longer than that uh, when her life was taken by the defendant. Uh, the jury here convicted uh, the defendant of the crime of murder in the first degree. Uh, as the court is aware, um, there is no discretion in sentencing. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bahana Rivera is uh, going to be sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. And I would tell the court that based upon the facts and circumstances of this case, it is very well deserved. Uh, the, the facts and circumstances in this case, as the court knows, you set through the trial, you know what the evidence is in this case, were overwhelming as it relates uh, to the defendant. Um, and quite honestly, Judge, um, there's a victim impact statement from the mother uh, of Molly Tibbetts, Laura Calderwood, um, that if the court needs any further justification for why that sentence is warranted in the state of Iowa, uh, should look no further than that victim impact statement that she provided to the court that will be read a little bit later. So we would ask that the court impose that mandatory sentence upon the defendant. We would also ask that you order uh, an amount of $150,000 uh, pursuant to Iowa Code Section 903B since this crime involved the death of Molly Tibbetts. And that um, I, there's the file is quite thick in this case. I don't know if there's been other uh, pecuniary damage statements that have been filed but if there are we would ask that you enter an order in, at that amount and also if you can leave it open an additional 30 days for us to finalize any other um, amounts that the court uh, may order as it relates to uh, any pecuniary damages that would be warranted pursuant to statute uh, so with that judge we would ask that you impose that sentence and um, again indicate to the court that we feel that it is very well justified. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Freeze, on behalf of Mr. Uh, Behina Rivera, uh, anything you wish to say at this time? Your Honor, given the mandatory nature of the sentence, uh, we have nothing to say. Thank you. Mr. Behina Rivera, you're not required to say anything to me, but I want to afford you the opportunity. Do you have anything you wish to say to me prior to my announcing what I'm going to do here today? No, thank you. With that then, uh, we may proceed to the victim impact statement. Judge, we have just one victim impact statement. It's uh, from Laura Calderwood, who is the mother of Molly Tibbetts. It will be read by Sarah Harms, okay. uh, who is the victim witness coordinator in my office. And Ms. Harms, uh, you may do whatever you're comfortable with. You can keep your mask on, or you may remove it. Again, whatever you're most comfortable with, okay? okay. Okay. Mr. Rivera, I come here today not because I feel the need to address you. However, I come here to give a voice to our daughter, granddaughter, sister, girlfriend, niece, cousin, and friend, Molly Cecilia Tibbetts. Molly was a young woman who simply wanted to go for a quiet run on the evening of July 18th, and you chose to violently and statistically end that life. I want to address the chain of events you set off on the morning of August 18th after you led authorities to Molly's remains in a cornfield. Do you know what it's like, Mr. Rivera? to be woken up by your youngest son, Scott, telling you the sheriff needs to talk to us. 
Scott and I stood in the entrance of our home where sheriffs Tom Kriegel and Matt Mushman stood with tears in their eyes. It took them a minute to find the words to say, we hoped for a different results. However, we found Molly's remains today. I thanked them for their service and they left because there was still a lot of work to be done. I led Scott, whose eyes were brimming with tears, to the living room and sat him down on the couch. Scott, and Scott, I said, I am so sorry. I'm gonna call Aunt Billy over to the house to be with you because mom has a lot of work to do. Next, I needed to tell my son, Jake. Jake was in his apartment in Iowa City and I did not want him to hear that his sister was not coming home on the news. Knowing my sister Kim was headed to Iowa City for work, I called her and said, Kim, they found Molly's remains this morning and I need you to pick Jake up and bring him home. It was a race against the clock to notify all the people who cared so deeply for Molly that she was not coming home. It was very important to notify the people who cared deeply about Molly so they did not hear this on the news. Imagine what it's like to call Molly's father, Rob, who resides in Fresno, California, and say, Rob, I am so sorry to have to tell you this, but they found Molly's remains this morning and I need you to come back to Iowa. Can you imagine, Mr. Rivera, as a father, having Paulina's mother taken away from you and to have to tell your daughter that she will never come home? However, the most difficult person to tell was Molly's grandmother and my mother, Judy Calderwood. Judy truly believed her granddaughter would be found alive because who could harm such a beautiful, vibrant young woman so full of life and promise? Who could harm Judy's precious granddaughter, let alone brutally murder her and dump her body in a cornfield? This was heartbreaking news that needed to be delivered in person. I entered my mother's home and she greeted me with a big smile and asked if I wanted a cup of coffee. There certainly was no easy way to tell her the news. However, it had to be done before her phone started ringing with loved ones sending their condolences. I very quietly and softly said, Mom, I have some bad news. They found Molly's body this morning, but we know where she is now. Judy Calderwood's unwavering faith had been brutally shattered by your senseless act of violence. Can you imagine, Mr. Rivera, sitting across the table from your madre and telling her Paulina is never coming home? I am aware that you know Ulysses Felix Sandoval and his family. Yuli, as I call him, was a classmate and a friend of my son Scott. Do you know Yuli was at the press conference where authorities announced that you, Christian Mahana Rivera, had been charged with the murder of Molly Tibbetts? Yuli immediately started crying, but knew that he needed to call his madre before she heard it on the news. The Felix Sandoval family was devastated. How could this young man they fed and fostered be responsible for such a heinous crime? Do you know, Mr. Rivera, that Yuli's parents had to leave Brooklyn because they were receiving death threats? Do you know Yuli lived in our home for his last year of high school so he could finish his senior year and play sports? However, Yuli's parents did not get to experience his senior year with him because of your senseless act. Because of your act, your then employer, Craig Lane, lost all his employees because those workers were afraid of what would happen to them. Because of your act, Dalton Jack will never get to give Molly the engagement ring he had purchased for her. Because of your act, Molly's father, Rob, will never get to walk his only daughter 
down the aisle. Because of your act, Mr. Rivera, I will never get to see my daughter become a mother. I do hope one day Paulina has the opportunity to become a mother, but how will she ever explain to her children who their grandfather is? This is the legacy you left behind for your only child, Mr. Rivera. I don't know whose situation is worse. Brian, let me just confirm for the record then that is the only uh, victim impact statement. That is the only victim impact statement. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Based on the jury's guilty verdict entered on the 28th day of May 2021, it is the finding of this court that the defendant is guilty and has now ordered a judge to decree that the defendant is guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree in violation of Iowa Code Section 707.2, Prens 1, Prens small a. Mr. Bahina Rivera, I want to inform you that I've considered all the sentencing options provided for in Chapters 901 and 907 of the Iowa Code, and my judgment relative to the sentence is based on that which provides maximum opportunity for your rehabilitation, at the same time protecting the community from further offenses by you and others. Mr. Bahino Rivera, you and you alone forever change the lives of those who love Molly Tibbetts. And for that, you and you alone will receive the following sentence. It is the order and judgment of this court acting pursuant to the provisions of section 902 of the Code of Iowa that the defendant be, he is hereby committed to the custody of Iowa Your Department of Corrections for a lifetime sentence with no eligibility for parole. It is further ordered that the Iowa Medical and Classification Center at Oakdale, Iowa is designated as a reception center to which the defendant is to be delivered by the Sheriff of Powershee County or his designee. The court further orders as follows. The defendant shall pay $150,000 to the heirs at law of Molly Tibbetts, pursuant to Iowa Code Section 81. You are required to submit a DNA sample. Pursuant to the request of the state, the state is given 30 days from today's state date to uh, file any restitution statements or clarify any that have been uh, filed. And uh, once that is filed, should there be any, the defense will then have 15 days to file any objections, again, should there be any. Mr. Bahina Rivera, I've selected this particular sentence for you after considering the nature of the offense committed by you the harm to the victim and the victim's family, your need for rehabilitation, and the necessity for protecting the community from further offenses by you and others. Uh, I'm going to go uh, here in just a minute to Mr. Bahina Rivera's appeal rights. Before we do that, Mr. Brown, I believe on behalf of the state, you had an area you wanted to clarify for the record. I did, Judge. Um, for whatever reason, there were several exhibits that did not make it to the court reporter following trial. They're all the video clips uh, that we utilized at trial that the court admitted. I've shown those video clips to the defense to verify that those were the actual exhibits uh, that were admitted. They are exhibits 11, 13, 14, 16, 18, and 20. We have provided those to the court uh, on a uh, separate flash drive, which we gave to the court reporter uh, this afternoon. Again, we did verify that with, I believe it was Ms. Fries that confirmed that uh, uh, with us last week. Uh, but just to make sure the record's clear and that we have all the exhibits that will uh, 
uh, go up with this case on appeal. We wanted to make sure we verified all that for the record. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Ms. Fries, uh, any concerns or qualms with what Mr. Brown has represented the court? No, that's what we did. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown, again, uh, anything else we need to address for the record? Nothing else. Thank you. Defense? No, Your Honor. Mr. Bahina Rivera, as the defendant in this case, you are advised you have the right to appeal your conviction and the judgment just rendered against you to the Iowa Supreme Court. And if such an appeal is taken and you are financially unable to pay the costs thereof, you have the further right to apply to this court for the appointment of counsel, the furnishing of the transcripts of the proceedings had in this court, and the printing of the record and necessary briefs on your behalf into the such an appeal, all at the expense of the state of Iowa. You are further advised if you desire to take such an appeal to the Iowa Supreme Court, you or your attorney must within 30 days from today's date serve the written notice of the taking of such an appeal upon the county attorney of this county and file the same with the Power Sheet County Clerk of Court together with evidence of such service upon the county attorney and you must promptly mail or deliver an informational copy to the Iowa Attorney General. The service and the filing of a written notice of the appeal in time or measures is specified as jurisdictional and a failure to comply with such requirements shall be deemed a voluntary waiver of your right to an appeal. With that then, judgment accordingly, minimus accordingly, no bond on appeal, and with that, Mr. Bahina Rivera, you shall go without day and we will close the record.